In recent weeks, interest has been raised about whether crop insurance will make payments in 2018 as a result of soybean price declines. This topic has an interest of farmers, policymakers, and crop insurance companies. Due to a number of factors with Chinese trade concerns being a major one, soybean prices have declined. For example, on the November 2018 contract, we saw soybean prices above $10 for much of the year, and during the period in which our crop insurance prices are select, in February for Midwest states, soybean prices averaged 10.16, and that is what turned out to be the projected price for soybeans. In recent weeks, um, soybean prices have declined, and right now we're looking at 8.40 as a rough price for the November 2018 contract. And if we were looking at it, that 840 would be a pretty good estimate of what we would expect harvest prices to be during the month of October. Most farmers purchase RP crop insurance, and this year the RP guarantee, or whether they will get paid, will be found by multiplying the coverage level times the trend-adjusted APH yield times the maximum of the projected price, which for soybeans is 1016, or the harvest price. It looks very probable now that the harvest price will be below the projected price, so our guarantee will be based on the 1016 projected price. We'll get paid, our farmers will get paid, if that RP guarantee is higher than the harvest revenue, and again, that will be based on the harvest price. Settlement prices during the month of October times the yield. At this point, we obviously don't know the yield, but we can get a feel for whether these contracts will pay by multiplying the projected price by the coverage level. And again, if we do that, the projected price is 1016, a 85% coverage level, which is a pretty standard product in the Midwest, or a coverage level selected. We would get a break-even price of 864. That 864 means that crop insurance, RP, at 85% would make payments if the yield equals or is less than the guarantee yield. And obviously, we don't know that yet. But that 864 gives you a feel for it. Right now, we see contracts trading at near 840. So that 840 is less than 864. So there's... Uh, there is, if you will, in the money for RP85, but we would need to see a price, or excuse me, a yield decline before 80% coverage level would make payments. Obviously, we still don't know what yields are. In recent years, we've seen very good soybean yields, um, so we don't uh, have a good feel for what soybeans are yet. Although, if you're looking at growing conditions, you would expect something average or above. And again, in recent years, we've seen soybeans being pretty, 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 pretty good yields above trend line in every year since uh, since the last three years. And just to give you a feel, if we have an 85 percent coverage level, 840 price, we would need to see yield at least less than 1.03 times our trend-adjusted APH yield. So if we have any sort of yield, above-average yields in soybeans, we wouldn't be seeing much payments on, on, on soybeans. If you look at history, um, soybean loss ratios in, in Illinois have been relatively low. We've seen them average 0.49 for a loss ratio. That loss ratio of 0.49 means that for every dollar of premium paid in, total premium, 49 cents is paid back over time on a crop insurance RP policy. Harvest minus projected price, um, right now, if you look at that, we're looking at something like 250. So if a harvest price is below the projected price, we would expect larger payments. We have one time in history when we've seen a harvest price less than the projected price by three dollars and that happened in 2008 and then in that year we saw a loss ratio above one meaning that there was more payments in or excuse me premiums paid out than total premiums paid in but it wasn't something like what we saw in 2012 when we had drought 
one it's above one but not excessively so and actually if you look at a history and look at harvest price minus projected prices um, most of the others which tend to be between zero and minus two um, didn't result in loss ratios above one in this state again we're looking at insurance prices that could be large but we would I would still say that it's not likely yet because if you're looking at yields you would say that there's a chance of pretty good yields this year one other point about crop insurance payments is and that is if we do see crop insurance payments on soybeans we are looking at low grain farm incomes this year um, some of the conditions you have to have this year for higher incomes are 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 above trend yields and if we're getting crop insurance payments that would indicate that we're not above trend um, one other final point about uh, crop insurance payments is that if they will not make up for any trade disruptions that have happened I mean we are we were looking at prices close to 10 we're going to be looking at uh, price declines and crop insurance won't cover that price to all of that price declines so crop insurance shouldn't be looked at as a way of of covering or making good the losses that would exist for any 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 trade disruptions again this is covered in our july 17th farm doc daily article so go to farm doc daily and you can see more of that issue discussed on that paper